one of the other projects I'm going to talk to you about is the first part of the program, which is the Birch of Cropping Group run, which is to look at how farmers actually fared in Victoria in the Wimmera and the Mallee. We didn't do the South, only the Wimmera and the Mallee, in terms of what happened in the last 20 years. So when I was a farm consultant, I worked with farmers and we had perfect records for 20 years. So we got all the production data and all the financial data. So there was a really fantastic data source to look at what actually happened on farm during that time. What did the farmers do to adapt especially during the drought period of the millennium or the big, the big um, dry period around the turn of the, or just after the um, year 2000. So in the, um, in the Mallee part, and the, especially the southern Mallee, but also the northern Wimmera, during the, from 2000 onwards, we had nine consecutive years with less than a decile three. Now everyone's familiar with the terminology decile? No. no? A decile is when you get 100 years of rainfall, a decile 1 is the 10 lowest years of rainfall, and a decile 10 is the 10 highest years of rainfall. So a decile 5 is the average rain. Now a decile 3 is generally regarded as a, as a drought, and we had nine, in the, 9 consecutive years, obviously, in a row, but that's tautology. But anyway, 9 years and the previous longest period of 3 dry years in a row it was, the, was three dry years in a row, so we had nine in a row. Now, you can do the mathematics on that, because the decile three is a one in three chance, yeah? And if you work out how, does it, how many does it take to have nine in a row, so it's a third times a third times a third times a third, and do that nine times, and that's one in 20,000. So it is actually, there's no question that it is possible to get that kind of rainfall, but it was had a severe, in fact, impact on farmers in our region. And then last year we had a decile 10 with the wettest harvest period on record by far. We had 330 mil, and there are still a lot of farmers in that Mallee and also Eastern Mallee as well who are still harvesting, and some significant amounts of crop are still coming off. And um, 330 mil is 110 mil more than the previous highest record, which is in 1931. Now, I guess you can argue this is all part of climate variability or climate change. Now, either terminology doesn't really matter to me a lot because I think it, what it actually demonstrates is that farmers have to be very flexible in trying to manage these kind of weather events, and no doubt they will continue. So the discussion topics that I'm going to raise with you this morning is comparing three farms, one in the Northern Mallee, and they're quite different farms, one in the Southern Mallee and one in the Wimmera. Now one of the things that we found in this particular study is not just the weather, but it's also the soil resource which is absolutely critical and it's primarily related to the water holding capacity of the soil on which surprisingly Australia has done very, very little work in the last or previously, and it's only in the last 10 years that there's been a major program on working out how much water can a soil actually hold. And it's not just the physical component, it's also the chemical component. Because as you know, many soils have got subsoil constraints. They're very high either in salt or they're very low in pH, such as they're acidic soils. And the roots can't go down very deep, which has a huge impact on how well the crop or a pasture can actually grow during the season. We'll talk a bit about the impact of the drought, also the long-term production and uh, financials, and some risk management strategies that these farms adapted over the last few years. So this is the, um, the rainfall records for, for Birchip, as just as an example. That's where David Smith lives, and Ian McClellan as well. So we had the Federation drought, which was a quite extensive period around the turn of the... Um, around 1900. We had the World War II drought and then we had the Millennium drought. But interspersed with the stars we've also had some individual dry years. And the Millennium drought was actually the longest dry period and it wasn't just the lack of rain, it was also significantly less moisture in the air so the evaporation rates during the time were actually much higher too. So it was actually a, a quite severe event. And this running line is the five-year running average. 
and you can see how far it came down here below the average which is about just up here and as you also quite interesting this period here was when a lot of the cropping practices were developed that farmers were used to and then they got this dry period and the same cropping practices that were developed in the 90s and um, or the 80s and the 90s weren't suited to this very long dry period. <coughs> so for example in the Mallee there's soil profiles in the southern Mallee especially there's, um, the rooting depth is only about 60 to 80 centimetres deep which means the available soil water holding capacity is only 80 millimetres and that is primarily because there's a lot of subsoil constraints in the soil and like I mentioned before that, that has a huge impact so you can't just look at rainfall you also got to look at the biophysical components of the soil because they are a primarily determinant of the potential yield and how risky the environment is and what sort of adaptations a farmer in that area can actually have to his farming practice to overcome those kind of constraints. So it's not just rainfall. Now the Mallee farm we looked at has um, changed to a, a no-till operation in 2003. So they sold all their livestock. They've got no fences and they've got no watering points left in any of the paddocks. So even if they wanted to go back to livestock, that would be a real struggle. <coughs> So the Mallee farming system, which is on that swale and land dune system, has dramatically changed in the last 10 or 15 years with a, a big swing towards continuous cropping and very high input cropping at that. And this particular farm is 100% crop with wheat and barley, occasional pulse crops but quite a bit of canola. All stubbles are retained, everything is done with precision seeding so that it's sowing between the rows and everything else and this particular farm is also applying a lot of liquid fertilizers so that's a, a new farming system not new to australia it's obviously been happening in western australia and south australia a long time but certainly new, newer to the mallee and it's, there's been a big swing from a lot of mallee farmers to this kind of farming system and they don't run sheep anymore the southern mallee farm is slowly changing over no-till but while the, um, while the older farmer will maintain sheep on that property, it'll be interesting to see when his son takes over whether the sheep will stay on this farm. And um, this particular farm also put in a feedlot last or a few years ago, in term, and that's primarily done to increase their stocking rate, but also to take the sheep out of the paddock in, April, in March and April when the big pressure comes on for, um, for wind erosion. Um, this farm is nearly all wheat and barley plus sheep and the occasional paddock of lentils. So the, the Wimmera farm is, um, they've been no-tilling for a long time. You can see the very white rows of chickpeas on the left hand side. But because of the, um, because of the dry periods and a lot of their crops failing late in the year, so after August, September, a lot of their crops didn't have enough moisture because that farm generally produces around six ton of wheat to the hectare but in the drought years they certainly weren't getting anywhere near that so they started producing oat and hay export oat and hay and this large part of their farm is now an oat and hay production so the three farms are quite different in different locations and we just talk a bit about what they've actually done to mitigate against the seasons so we had 19 years of data not only farm size but also paddock rotation but all production figures yield and protein all their inputs and their basic management practices as well as a complete record of all their costs so besides income so we had all the costs in relation to inputs and that's where you normally see gross margin analysis and machinery finance and labor so that includes their own labor costs as well so it is a, was a fantastic data set to really see and understand what's actually happening on the farm. And there's been huge changes over that time, especially in relation to inputs and finance. So as, a very, as an example for the Southern Mallee farm, that was very typical of the other farms that we looked at, that the farms had nearly doubled in size over the last 20 years, which is a, 
reflection of the way that a lot of farms have gone in our region. So the big increase in farm when the sun came home in um, 2005. So this is the uh, wheat yield for, as an example for the Southern Mallee farm with an average wheat yield of two and a half tonne up to the year 2000 and an average pre this year of about one tonne to the hectare. So there's a huge loss in production over that drought period. And the same applied for the Wimmera. So they went from about four, four and a half tonne, five tonne down to about three tonne and in the Mallee from two tonne down to 1.2 tonnes. So the Mallee on the sandy system actually managed the lack of water, lack of rainfall much better than the southern Mallee farm and that's purely related to the soil type. Now the sandy soils were much more resilient because the roots can go much deeper and even in a low rainfall year they can produce some crop whereas in the southern Mallee for those very high subsoil constraints they couldn't manage that. So when I plotted the yield for that particular farm in the Southern Mallee against rainfall, there is a, a quite a close correlation between yield and growing season rainfall. So growing season rainfall is April to October. And roughly around here with growing season rainfall of about 180 mil is when crop production really drops way down. So 180 mil is a decile three or decile two and a half and that is really the critical amount of rainfall for that particular farm. So a decile two and a half means that two and a half out of ten years this farm can expect to grow little or no grain. And obviously even in a year like this year when very little grain has grown but because of the price in 2008 was excellent it's still marginally profitable year. But in other years such as in 2004 if, unless the price is very good, they're actually large loss years. And I'll show you that in a minute. So when we looked at the income and costs for this particular farm, the farm expenses are in red, these solid bars on this end, and the farm income are these green hatch bars on the side. And you can see that those, the drought years were the very low income years, but clearly the costs are still quite high. Now in that, for this particular farm, the management changes primarily during that drought year for in terms of agronomy were in changing the whole emphasis for nitrogen being up front to being nitrogen in the crop. And they're using crop models such as APSOM through the yield profit program to actually manage when they're going to put out the nitrogen if they were going to put it out at all. So this particular graph is the uh, three year running average for farm income. You can see there's quite reasonable productivity gains during the 90s of about five to seven percent per year. So that's you know, what we expect to see on farm or what we would hope to see on farm. And the farm expenses were pretty stable over that time period, maybe a small increase and then it dropped down a bit and started to increase again and we'll definitely be talking about that. But over the last 10 years, you can really see that that farm productivity on this particular farm has dropped way down. And very similarly for the Mallee farm and less so for the Wimmera farm. So the Wimmera farm has been able to main, maintain their productivity increase, whereas the Southern Mallee farm and the Mallee farm have dropped way back. Now, if you are working in any kind of industry and they were having this kind of increase you'd be quite happy in seeing that but at the moment to have that is actually a real negative. Now clearly last year was a fantastic year with a decile 10 rainfall and as farmers you all know that if you can take opportunities off in a year like that year that will compensate a lot for the losses that this or farm make in the poor years. Now unfortunately with 330 mil of harvest rain they still have a lot of crop on the stalk in the paddock and clearly their, their quality of the grain is minimal at the moment. So you know, the 2010 year isn't going to bring this graph significantly way back